In this tutorial, we will perform a transient dynamic analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. This type of analysis is usually performed to capture the time dependent behavior of complex structural systems under the action of externally applied loads. We will perform transient dynamic analysis on a cantilever plate. One end of the cantilever plate will be displaced from its initial position by action of an external force. After the force is removed, the free vibration of the cantilever plate will be observed under the action of structural damping. Let's get right into it. The link for the CAD model used in this video is provided in the description. Feel free to download the CAD and follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of the overall analysis setup process. The first step is to mesh the component and assign a material and property to it. Let's start by editing and simplifying the CAD model to get a good mesh flow in the next step. Once the geometry is imported in Hypermesh, we can see one component in the model browser. Let's edit this geometry to get a good mesh flow in all regions. Open the split tool from geometry ribbon. Select the lines sub option. Now switch the drop down to offset lines. Enable washer split checkbox and select this circular edge. Let's use an offset value of 2 mm. Once the offset is created, exit the split tool. Now open the general 2D mesh tool from mesh ribbon. Select the two surfaces. With mesh size as 2, create the mesh. By pressing down control key and using the scroll button, we can adjust the node density along any edge of the geometry. As a satisfactory mesh is created at all locations, we can now exit the 2D meshing tool. Let's hide the geometry as it is no longer required. To view the mesh properly, Switch the visualization to shaded elements view. Now create a new material. Provide a name to it. With card image as mat1, we will enter the default mechanical properties of steel in unit system Newton, millimeter, ton, second. Create a new property and enter a name for it. We will use the default P shell card image. Select the steel material in material selection box. Let's use thickness value as 2 mm. Assign the shell property to the component. The material gets assigned automatically. Now we will create virtual point masses at particular locations in the model. This will be followed by defining the time dependent loads to displace the cantilever beam from its equilibrium position. Let's take a look at how this is done. Let's start by creating a new component to store RBE3 elements. Open the model ribbon. We will use the RBE3 creation tool. Switch the independent selector to edges and select this circular free edge. Make sure that all degrees of freedom are selected. Check all degrees of freedom for the independent node. We will calculate the weighing factors for each node automatically. Create the RBE3 element. Now create a new component to add virtual mass to the model. We will use the masses tool from model ribbon. Select the center node of the RBE3 element. Let's enter the mass value as 0.002 ton that is equal to 2 kg. With all other options as default, 
create the mass to define the locations for force application let's create a new set Change the card image to set grid. We will switch the advanced selector to surfaces and select all nodes on this surface. Add these nodes to the set. Now create a new load collector to store single point constraints. Open the BCS tool from Analyze ribbon. We will use the Constraints sub option. Switch the selector to Edges and select this free edge. With all 6 degrees of freedom checked, create the constraints. Exit the BCS tool by clicking on it again. Create another load collector to store D area type of constraints. We will again use the constraints sub option in BCS tool. Now switch the selector to nodes. Using the by sets selection criteria, Select all the nodes from force nodes set. Uncheck all degrees of freedom except DOF3. We will apply a force of magnitude 5 Newton along negative Z direction on each of these selected nodes. Set the load type as D area and create the constraints. Exit the BCS tool. To define the time dependent scale factor for these D area forces, create a new curve. Initially, the scale factor will be 1, that is, 5 Newton force will be applied at all D area nodes. After a short interval, the scale factor will be reduced to 0, that is, no force is applied and the system is free from external loading conditions. The objective is to observe the free vibration of the component after the initially applied force is completely removed. Exit the curve editor and change the card image of this curve to table D1. Now create a new load collector to link this time dependent loading data to the D area constraints. Change the card image to T load 1. In the excited field, select the D area load collector. Set the type as load. In the TID field, assign the table D1 curve. Create another load collector to define the time stepping control for this transient dynamic analysis. Change the card image to T step. We will specify 600 increments of time interval 0.005 second The boundary conditions for the transient dynamic analysis have now been defined but we have not yet specified the damping parameters. Now we will induce viscous damping in the model by specifying some additional run parameters. Before that, let's create a transient analysis load step to couple the time dependent loads and other boundary conditions in the model. Create a new load step and provide a name to it.
change the analysis type to transient direct. Assign the SPC load collector in SPC selection box. Select the T load 1 collector in D load entry. Lastly, assign the time stepping controls in T step time field. Check the output option to request the required results for post processing. We will output displacement results for all nodal locations in H3D format. Similarly, also request the stress results for all elements in H3D format. The transient dynamic analysis setup is now complete, but we have not yet introduced the influence of damping. To do this, we will specify additional parameters before submitting this job to the OptiStruct solver. Using the G option, we can specify the value of uniform structural damping coefficient for this component. For better results, we will convert this structural damping to equivalent viscous damping by entering the desired conversion factor using W3 option. Note that these values must be accurately defined to capture the exact effects of structural damping in dynamic condition. All the required settings have now been defined. Let's export the solver deck from file menu. Create a new folder to save this FEM file. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any errors during the solver run. Set export options to all and complete the export. Using the file browser, we will copy the location of this FEM file. Now open the compute console to submit this job to the OptiStruct solver. In the input field, select the FEM file. Click on run to launch the solver. This may take some time to solve. The analysis is now complete and we can view the results in Hyperview. Close the solver window and compute console. We will create a new page in the same Hyperworks session. The client will be automatically switched to Hyperview. Let's load the results. Select the FEM file in load model selection box. Select the corresponding H3D file in load results selection field. Apply the results. We will hide the RBE3 and mask component for now. Let's orient the model for better visualization. Now open the contour panel. Set the animation mode to transient. Now apply the displacement results and play the animation. We can adjust the speed of the animation by adjusting frame rate controls. We can clearly see the free vibration of the plate after external forces are removed. The reduction in amplitude of vibration due to damping is also captured in this simulation. Over the total runtime of 3 seconds, the amplitude of free vibration almost tends to zero due to the damping effects.
To get a graphical representation of the structural damping, let's use the plot tool. Select the center node of the RBE3 element. Select the Z component of displacement and plot the graph in a new window. As you can see, the displacement versus time graph is created and we can clearly see the reduction in amplitude of vibration over a period of 3 seconds. We have successfully performed a transient dynamic analysis using Hypermesh and OptiStruct. And this is how we can perform a transient dynamic analysis using Hypermesh and OptiStruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.